This is To Hatch a Pod. Sit back and relax as Key, Corey, Greg, and Ashley talk about what's happening in and around To Hatch a Pee. It's To Hatch a Pod time. Key Budge, Ashley Whitmore today. Ashley, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Key? It's I'm doing really good. Good. And thank you for joining me today. Absolutely. And today, what well, we've got a special guest. We have Vanessa Villanueva. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> nice to have you here. Vanessa and I met, was it at the the chamber or it EDC? It was um, at the uh, first luncheon, uh, lunch and learn. Lunch and learn for social media yeah. that uh, Corey and I taught over at Village Co. And we started talking afterwards. And you own your own. Well, I don't even know where to start because let's start with you own your own business. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that, let's tell everyone what it is. Yeah. So my business is Shield Pacific Insurance, and it is an insurance brokerage here in Tehachapi that provides home, business, and auto insurance to all of California. See, and okay, so we go, okay, that's great, fantastic, but you're so young. Yeah, that's exactly what I was <laughs> right. going to say. And now, and now I've already, mm-hmm. there was an article on you last year, the yeah. Tehachapi News. Mm-hmm. How long have you been a part of the business, the insurance world? Uh, since I was 16. So um, I started out by like interning for um, an old family friend at her business when she was here. And then that soon moved into me having a customer service job. When I turned 18, I took the test, I got my license, and then they ended up moving out of state and closed their business here. I was actually going to buy their business and just continue it. They decided to just continue it on their own out of state. And so I was like, well, I know there's no other insurance brokerage that does home and auto as far as I'm aware. (laughs) And I was like, I'm just going to fill that market for attached B and opened it when I was, when I was 20 years old. (laughs) That's, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit lives very well inside of you. I mean, for you to be one, to be, uh, you know, starting off with the internship that turns into, Mm -hmm. you know, a job that ends up uh, helping you get your license and learning the business through someone, someone else Mm -hmm. to saying, no, I can, I can do this and represent the community and Mm -hmm. provide something. It takes guts. It does. (laughs) Honestly, it does. Absolutely. Let's talk about that journey for you. Mm-hmm. So you kind of glance through it, but I mean, yeah. so you learn the business and then they decided that they were going to relocate mm-hmm. the business and yeah. it didn't work for you to relocate out of state. You yeah, just- no. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that when that all happened, it was October of 2020 and I had actually just bought my house with my boyfriend. So we obviously we were just we just moved into our new house and it was like well moving out of state all my family's here i just to follow them out of state just was not in the cards yeah it was not in the picture for me so but that was one of the reasons why i wanted to buy their business and continue it here in tatchby was because i had technically been managing all the day-to-day things and all of that for a about a year before they had moved. So it had made sense for me to essentially continue it because I had spent so much time doing the insurance thing and being an agent and I obviously also loved it. So, (laughs) but yeah, when they had decided to back out, it was like, well, the next best thing would just to be to open my own. So what's that been like for you to, Mm -hmm. to open your own business, Mm -hmm. you know, here in Tehachapi and uh, to, to step into this world on your own? I'm very thankful to have my dad with me because my dad is my business partner. Learning like the marketing and trying to essentially put myself out there more because I'm very introverted. I'm a very introverted person. So learning like to put myself out there more and try to like actually sell my business has been a completely different like side of business that I, it's been a struggle to learn, but I feel like now that I'm kind of going into my second year or I'm going to be on my second year, like come May, I'll have been open for two years that I'm going to finally like actually start putting myself out there. And like, uh, this is essentially coming to you and like, throwing out the idea of being on the podcast is like the first like major step I've taken to really 
put myself out there. I feel well, yeah, like. that's great. Now you have a TikTok channel. I do. <laughs> and Instagram. So oh, I do. Yeah. Do I so need to look these up? You, it is. <laughs> you do. Because, okay, when, when Vanessa says she's an introvert and it's hard for her, you made some TikTok videos. Mm-hmm. And, I did. And you, you really kind of came at it very smartly about, you know, talking about terms that people maybe mm-hmm. don't understand, yeah. you know, and you, you threw in a TikTok dance yeah. and, and did, <laughs> did some things mm-hmm. to, to reach people and utilize social media. And like you said, you were learning the marketing aspect mm-hmm. of your yeah. business. What's that been like? And what's the response been like? So, um, people who do know about my TikToks, who have seen them, I do get compliments on it. Uh, for example, I'm sure, you know, Noah Hall, he's seen, um, he's at Tashby News. He's seen my TikToks. He was like, oh, they're so great. Like when he comes in and talks to me, he's like, you're a different person on, um, (laughs) TikTok because for me, like being behind a camera or anything like that, I'm very used to that because I like to act. So that's kind of what I put that stuff in that kind of box. And I also did some research on TikTok to see what insurance was on TikTok or like what things were relating to insurance. And a lot of it was, it felt very boring to me to like, just, it was almost rambling or very monotone people who were talking about insurance. And one of the reasons why I fell in love with insurance was being able to teach people about something that's so essentially scary when you first think about it. Like, oh, I'm buying this house. I never have done home insurance before. I don't know what to do. These people are telling me about all these different things that I have no clue what that means. So for me, being able to teach someone about that is like the best part about insurance. And so I wanted to essentially bring that to TikTok or the TikTok videos that I've done. I wanted to start out with doing a dance of like, oh, by the way, I'm a fun person. Like, it's okay for you to talk to me. Like, I'm here to be your friend and to just teach you about the ins and outs of it. And even if it's down to the simplest terms that I think are simple terms, I know for other people, it's like, I have no idea what that means. (laughs) I'm still just in shock here at how young you are and how enthusiastic you are. Yeah. about your job and your career and and I, in, honestly even having a career at you know in your early 20s yeah. it's great <laughs> yeah and and you you're recognizing things that usually take people a long time and it's like mm-hmm. terms um, inside an industry mm-hmm. you know you get jargon yeah you know I've got mm-hmm. a law enforcement background so it's easy to talk codes and things that mm-hmm. cop the cop talk yeah you know city government we do the same thing. And then when I when we do the podcast and we kind of get into some city terminology and I go, hey, let's let me break that down mm-hmm. so we everyone understands it. Yeah, you're grasping that already. Mm-hmm. That in the insurance business there are terms, words mm-hmm. that maybe might be confusing, or it, mm-hmm. the industry used them all the time. Yeah, so it becomes a part of the conversation. But oh, it's yeah. like my customer may not know exactly what that means Mm -hmm. and they should understand that. Yeah. Well, I think what's helped me really come to realize that is I have a lot of my friends and my family who I've talked to them about certain things and they're like, what does that mean? (laughs) Like I'll say something that's so like basic or that comes second nature to me and they immediately are like, what does that mean? They get a glazed look over their yeah. face and you can see the question marks above their forehead yeah. going, uh. Yeah, well, even my boyfriend, like, I will say something about, like, a deductible or the word deductible will come up and he will ask me, like, wait, what does that mean again? And so it's, for me, it's like second nature to explain that to somebody. And of course, doing it since I was 16, I'm now 22. For the past six years that I've done it, I've also had people who I'm on the phone with and I'll say it a basic term to me and they will ask me like can you explain that a little bit more or I thought well why not essentially go to TikTok where people are there all the time it's obviously um there's a lot of the my generation the younger Gen Z's and stuff that are on there who are now getting to the age where it's time to like buy insurance and look into what that is and what that cost and coming into it fresh and new and not knowing anything thought well one gen z to another (laughs) right this is what it means yeah it makes you relatable to them Mm -hmm. especially as they're they're coming into the market i know like like with tiktok i i'm a huge fan of tiktok you know and i got you ashley and Corey (laughs) to to check it out because it's like 
you can get lost in you it for a while. You were on TikTok before I was on TikTok. Yeah, and I, I'm the old guy, right? <laughs> you know, but it, but it becomes mind numbing a little bit. But there's certain oh, yeah. things like the insurance business, you know, and very smart in how you market yourself. I've noticed it in the financial sector in making investing in stocks and things like that, those kinds of opportunities, much more obtainable for a younger mm-hmm. audience and going, it's mm-hmm. not just the old guy that gets to invest. Mm-hmm. We can invest at a much younger level. And then, yeah. you know, and I, I just think that mm-hmm. there's marketing has changed and it's getting younger. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so um, I was cool. It was, I thought it was pretty cool to see you had already adopted that as a part of your marketing plan. Yeah. Yeah. It also just TikTok makes things more digestible for people because it's shorter videos. And if they want essentially for um, as insurance and for insurance, if somebody wants to know like what a certain word means or they just want to know a little bit more about this one thing, doing short TikToks make it makes it easier. And if it's something that just comes up randomly, then it's like, oh, I didn't know that before. That's cool. Like. I have videos on my TikTok that come up all the time that it's like, did you know about this, this, and this? And it's like, I did not know that before. Thank you for teaching me. (laughs) And then I scroll to the next one. Well, as you go through and you've created this social media for your, for your business and it generates calls and people are calling you and you, so you get this, this Tehachapi person that calls you. What are some of the things that the residents of Tehachapi are looking for? You know, when they're looking to, whether they're maybe exploring ex- changing mm-hmm. insurance companies yeah. or if they're for first time, you know, policy buyers. Yeah. So when it comes to the insurance market for Tehachapi itself, I have a lot of people who are getting canceled by their insurance company. If they're obviously they've owned their home, they have insurance, but now it's gotten to the point where fire risk in California has become a problem. And so a lot of people are getting canceled by their current insurance or they're shopping for insurance and they're getting denied because they're being told their home is too high of a fire risk. And so then the carrier that gets thrown out there is the California Fair Plan. And I am very well versed, I like to say, in the California Fair Plan because I've been running home quotes with them essentially since I got my license. So I know all the ins and outs and the California fair plan is definitely something I would tell people, even if you're buying a home for the first time, that is something that you definitely want to look out for. If you are just looking at homes, I always would like, like to say, even I tell my friends who, if they start looking at homes, like the first thing you want to do is check the insurance because a lot of people will get into escrow for a home and then they start checking for insurance and realize they have to go with the California Fair Plan and it is extremely pricey, a lot pricier, three to four times as much as your standard home insurance policy is. So this is something you can walk people, if they came to you, they mm-hmm. can, you could walk them through the process oh, and yeah. maybe get them on a better I, possible. I do it on a daily basis. I have people who, I. that's one thing that I always ask somebody if I tell them, so you have to be placed with the California Fair Plan. Do you know what that entails? Some people will say, well, I've heard about it, but I don't really know what that means. And I walk them through the whole process of, well, the California Fair Plan is limited coverage for fire, wind, and hail. Essentially what a mortgage company is looking for your insurance to cover. However, the caveat to that is that it doesn't provide you things like liability, theft, water damage, and those are the extra coverages that essentially a standard home insurance policy does provide you. And that's kind of where the extra cost also comes in because you have two policies that are working together to give you as close to coverage as a single policy as possible. Wow. Okay. Now I've fallen into that cancellation based on, you know, the fire zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's not, it has not been a fun process going through trying to find, you know, the right policy to to cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now with you, your business is Shield Pacific Insurance. Yeah. And you're a brokerage. Yes. So let's explain what that means, being a brokerage. Yeah. So being a brokerage simply just means that I can run quotes with multiple carriers and give you all the pricing from all of them. And we can choose which one has the best coverage for the best price and go forward with that policy. Essentially, the difference is 
well, in the insurance world, we call it independent agent versus a captive agent. An independent agent is like what I am, where I can run with multiple carriers and we just choose whichever one is the best and we go with that. While a captive agent, for example, like State Farm, they have to run with State Farm and give State Farm the first say. Like they are the ones that they have to go with. If they can write the insurance, they have to go with State Farm. Well, for me, I have however many carriers for, like I have like five or six different auto carriers right now that I can run all auto quotes with and say, well, this is the one that's giving you the best price, so let's go with this carrier since they're going to be saving you the most money. Do they work with you from that point on, or it's just the first step they work with you? Uh, no, it's it's all me. So uh, throughout the entire policy, I'm the person that they talk to. If they need a change or they need, a, like for a car, if they need to add a car or remove a car, upgrade coverage, lower coverage, it's all done through me. And essentially, I am like the middleman, but it's so that way I'm on the long calls and on hold and waiting to hear from somebody instead of you sitting on the phone and you're like, oh, I can't get through the customer service because they're, I have to get, I get transferred to this person and then I get transferred to that person. Well, for me, I make the call, I get the change done and you don't have to worry it's about good to know. The stress. You mean, <laughs> so, so you don't run your call center through Indonesia? No, no, it's it's right here in Tehachapi, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, our Tehachapi residents, if they're they've got questions, they're talking to you here yep. in Tehachapi. Yep. If they call, I'm gonna be the one to answer. If you email, it's gonna be me. If you my my office phone receives text, so if you text me, it's gonna be me who's responding. Now, do you have an office people can come into? Yes, that's um, that's what's located at the Village Collective, and it's great over there. I've had customers who come in. You just check in on their little iPad that they got downstairs. I come, because my, my office is upstairs, so I come downstairs. I come and grab you. I greet you. I'm like, hey, come on up. Follow me up. And I always have people who are like, oh, it looks so nice in here. It's so great. So, and then I'm we're right there, and I can do everything right there in front of you, and we go over everything. Well, right here in Tejby. <laughs> so the so Village Co. For those that don't know the Village Collective, let's talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're the the entrepreneur that is utilizing that space. Yeah, that space has been repurposed. Mm-hmm. The Cummings, Nikki Cummings, had come in and they purchased and and decided that they were going to make this co working space. Mm-hmm. And what's that been like to be able to utilize that facility to run your business? It's been great. It's so when we at the beginning of February, when I actually moved in there, I was going over all my expenses and stuff. And I realized that moving into the village would save me a hundred bucks a month on all my expenses as far as a business goes. And I've already made connections with other businesses there. For example, I have a mortgage lender who's right across from me. And first day I was moving in, she came over and she was like, are you doing insurance? Do you do insurance for home? And I was like, yeah, I do. And she was like, that's great. Cause I don't have an agent that I'm using right now. So I'll be sure to send people your way. And I'm like, that's one of the main reasons why I got in there was because Where I was before, it was just me. I was the only person coming in every single day by myself. And now going there, I like I walk past Maya and Sarai and I'm like, good morning. And when I'm going up to my office, I'm walking by other people. So it's just it's nice to also be in a spot where it's other business owners that you can essentially relate to. (laughs) And the Village Collective is supportive of your business because they provide a few other things besides just a location for you to call your office and conference rooms Mm -hmm. and things that are available. Yeah. They also provide other services for that, that entrepreneur, whether it's a business startup Mm -hmm. or a business that like yourself, you start looking at hard costs Mm -hmm. and it makes much more sense to be in a co working space with a business your size. Definitely. And it's great with what I've got because I also get a certain amount of minutes to use in the conference room essentially for free like I've spoken with my dad before and we've talked about how all of our meetings that we have with each other are over zoom essentially and over the over a video and so we've talked about before of possibly having like now we can have more in-person meetings because we'll have a space to use that's literally right there right by a couple steps away from my office where we can be in person and talking about things for the business and going over marketing plans and all that stuff. And I may not have said this at the beginning. I think I, I, I mentioned it before we started recording. A part of you know today's show, our city manager, Greg, had told me, he goes, I really want to start to feature 
you know, small businesses mm-hmm. that are here in Tehachapi. And then Corey and I had talked last year, we had tried to March is uh, women's history month. And we looked mm-hmm. and we were kind of late on probably it was March 31st. We decided to do a show highlighting, mm-hmm. you know, and featuring a woman that owns a business here in Tehachapi. Mm-hmm. So we're on the ball a little bit faster <laughs> this <laughs> month. So. Yeah. Part of this was the timing of getting a chance to meet you mm-hmm. at that meeting and bringing you on the show was is kind of the twofold is to to highlight a, a small attached be business, mm-hmm. but female owned business here, yeah. a, an entrepreneur. And then you're also in another co working space that's owned by another female entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And it's just I, I think that it's it's smart for us to highlight both of those, mm-hmm. you know, and how you're able to work together. And now you've even mentioned someone else as a mortgage broker and you're yeah. networking and mm-hmm. and the strength of these collaborations that occur here in Tehachapi are helping, you know, your business grow. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, that's the thing too, is that the business that I was working for before was also a woman owned business. So, and I know that this month there's the professional women in the attach me news. I'm also going to have another article featured in that because last year I featured essentially my grand opening and this year is just to essentially get myself out there again more. <laughs> All right. So if someone's listening and they're going, okay, I, I maybe I do have some questions or maybe I should at least shop and see if there are better values mm-hmm. for me. How can people reach you? I had mentioned before that my phone for the office receives text. So you can either text or call me at 661-750-2991. Or if you'd like, you can feel free to email me at Vanessa, that's V A N E. SSA at shieldpacific.com. And then how do we follow you on your, we want to follow the TikTok journey, oh. your Instagram. <laughs> we can't talk about it. And I, not I, are you on uh, Facebook that, also? Yes, I am on Facebook. I have my Facebook is just Shield Pacific Insurance. My Instagram and TikTok, I remember you stating, I believe you had said, you wanted your uh, username to be the same across it all the helps. Boards. Yeah, it, I. I haven't had the chance to go and change it, but I was like, I do need to do that because <laughs> it's different for TikTok and Instagram. See, so, so she listened. So some of the <laughs> things did. that we taught in that class <laughs> transferred. Yeah. So as of right now, my Instagram page is shield underscore Pacific underscore insurance, which I think that's the one I might need to change because <laughs> it's kind of lengthy. As far as my TikTok goes, I have to well, go and check. The nice thing with the TikTok, you, you can find your TikTok page through your Instagram because you've got oh, yeah. your your videos are on your Instagram page. Yeah, I have uploaded my TikToks to my Instagram. So if you wanted to follow that specifically, you could go to those videos and find it because I it's going to take me a second to that's all good. find it on TikTok. I was not prepared for that. Okay, so if there's one thing that you'd like to pass on to the folks that are listening that Um, we haven't asked you today. Yeah, it would just be that, well, I think the number one thing as far as like insurance goes, and I know I mentioned that people are being told their home is high fire risk. A lot of people do get confused between fire risk and fire protection. And essentially, fire risk is something that's out of everybody's control. For example, the terrain of your home, where specifically where your home is located, and like things like the wind, all that stuff is fire risk. While your fire protection is how close the fire hydrant is, how close the fire station is, as well as how well you're keeping up the brush around your home. That's a common misconception that I get from people who are asking me as far as why is my home high fire risk when the fire station is literally right next door. So that's just one thing that I would say to keep in mind when you are shopping for insurance and the difference between what your fire protection is versus your fire risk. And you're currently able to find those that are having that problem, Bear Valley, Stallion Springs, probably Alpine Forest, portions of Golden Hills, Mm -hmm. those residents that are getting canceled, Mm -hmm. you're able to successfully pair them with a a policy? With the California Fair Plan, I can definitely 100% of the time. We can always do the California Fair Plan. And the great thing about it is that it's customizable. So the California Fair Plan itself, we can change things around, add certain coverages or remove some, lower certain things if it's not exactly where you feel like that pricing is. And I recently got a new carrier that I'm trying as far as not going with the California Fair Plan goes. 
They're called Delos. We'll see how it goes. I recently ran a quote with them. They are still expensive, and that's kind of the issue, obviously, that I'm running into is that it's expensive, but it's not the California Fair Plan, so there's some trade-offs for okay. it. All so, right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right. One more time. Let's share the phone number. It is 661-750-2991, and you'll reach me, Vanessa, at Shield Pacific Insurance. Vanessa hey, Villanueva. Hey, before we stop here real yeah. quick, I just just because it's Women's Month, we've yeah. got our first woman entrepreneur here on the show. Uh, at least for the year. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> While we were sitting here, I literally mm. just got a text from a friend of mine that just randomly says, Behind mm. every successful woman is a tribe of other successful women who have her back. I thought that was, that is, the timing was perfect. Yeah. Yes. That's very true because my mom is also a uh, small business owner here in Tatchby who she owns her business with her best friend and they both own Flexit Pink and they have, they run their business out of here in Tatchby. So <laughs> outstanding. Yeah. That is give perfect. them a plug. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Hey, great poll on that. I mean, the timing was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. <laughs> All right, Vanessa Villanueva, owner of Shield Pacific Insurance here in Tehachapi, located over at Village Co. Mm -hmm. uh, Vanessa, thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me on the podcast. This and great. I'm looking forward to more TikToks because, and some of them, she actually had props. <laughs> yes. So as she's going, all of a sudden she's she's going through the video and then these props start appearing. So I thought yep. that was pretty cool. Very yeah. creative. <laughs> thank you. If, folks, if you have a question, uh, you can always send it to us at media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We'll get it to Vanessa. Or if there's a topic or a question that you have about the show or something going on in the community, let us know, and we'll be more than happy to try and explore that and get an answer for you. Media at TehachapiCityHall.com. Ashley, Vanessa, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi, featuring the community members who make this such a special place to call home. If you have a question or a thought you'd like to share, email media at TehachapiCityHall.com. Thank you to Gary Mazzola for sharing his song, This is Tehachapi.